morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome back to the Farm and Home Show. All this week, we've been talking about high tunnels, and we've got a new tool out that you may want to check out at your local Extension office. Good morning, I'm Kristen Hildebrand, and visiting back with us is Rachel Rudolph. She's our Extension Vegetable Specialist with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Thanks for coming back on. Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah, now one of your works that you've just put out is this high tunnel planting calendar. Yes, it's a new resource. Um, you know, it came about from demand mm -hmm. uh, from growers. They said, well, we need, you know, we need assistance, demand from agents too. And mm -hmm. they said, you yes. guys said, we need this. We want to help the growers. And so we kind of pooled a bunch of different data and a bunch of resources from over the years um, and, and created this, this resource. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. And it's just newly released just this year. Yep, um, I, I know January. it's hot off the press. Um, and can you kind of tell us about what this tool will allow high tunnel growers to to do. Right, so really it was developed to help growers plan when to direct seed, when to transplant, when to harvest, and kind of keep, um, you know, important temperature ranges in mind. So, you know, we have dates on here. We have, you know, the, the weeks of each month and kind of a, a bar to indicate when you could plant, when you could transplant, that type of thing. But the important thing is the minimum and the uh, optimal temperature ranges. So. The weather keeps changing. We yes. can't. It's kind of hard to predict from year to year what's going to happen. And so, um, if growers are curious as to which which one to lean on, those those weeks mm -hmm. or the temps, I would go with the temperatures. Yeah. yeah. And y'all have a lot of different crop families mm -hmm. too on here. Yep. From the idea is to kind of you know anything that somebody could possibly want to put in a high tunnel or that would be feasible to put in a high tunnel, right? Vegetables mostly, but there are strawberries in there. Mm -hmm. Um, really, it's it's kind of a fast reference to help growers plan ahead. Yeah, and like for a new grower, this would be the, an excellent tool for right. them to have because, you know, they're still kind of learning the system and, and how to use that high mm -hmm. tunnel. And so this is a, a great way to do that. Um, now, this one you have is Region 2. Region 2, yeah. So Region 2 would be here. Is that here? Central okay. Kentucky. I thought. Um, kind of, you know, uh, the bluegrass and then South Central Kentucky. That's kind of all in there. Um, Western Kentucky has its own region, they're region one. Okay. And then Eastern Kentucky is region three. Uh -huh. So, um, and for growers on the border, you know, kind of there's kind of a little fading of the blue mm -hmm. where the region two is. If you're on the border, then I would say uh, grab both and use them as a comparison. So the reason, really the reason this came about is because the high tunnel planting, high tunnel management, crop management is just not quite the same as open field. Right. And so to get the, to really optimize the high tunnel and the season extension potential with a high tunnel, you really need to, to plant earlier and plan ahead. And so generally, you know, the safe rule would say you could plant about two weeks earlier than what you would in an open field, right? Okay. Um, certainly there are lots of more experienced growers that do, that plant er, even earlier than that. Mm -hmm. And so, but this is generally about two weeks ahead of what you could do in an open field. So like if you were to use a certain cultivar or mm -hmm. variety, you would probably need to look at also the harvest date right. there and apply it with this. Yep, days to maturity, um, yep, the, the potential harvest date, mm -hmm. those would be really important. That Those days to maturity, some of those, um, for example, Brussels sprouts, right? Those days to maturity vary widely. They, you could have a 90-day Brussels sprout or you could have a 120-day Brussels sprout. So obviously keeping that in mind when you look at the calendar is gonna be really important. Right, right, it, absolutely. So the little um, area that's got a little bit of blue with the line mm -hmm. through it, you said that that was an area for direct seeding and also transplanting. Right, where they overlap. So some crops, uh, can be either direct seeded or transplanted. Gotcha. Right, and mm -hmm. so, you can see it um, right, there. right, yeah, so um, that one that you're pointing at is, looks like it's cabbage, mm -hmm. right? So most people would transplant that, but you could direct seed it, right? And so that's where that, that hash mark, that blending comes in. Now some crops you would probably only transplant, right? You're only going to transplant tomatoes right. or peppers, uh -huh. right? Yeah, there's certain crops like there's you There's certain crops. And then there's other crops that you would really only direct seed, right? Carrots, mm -hmm. beets, 
um, radishes, those kind of things, you probably only direct seed them. Yeah, if somebody's interested in picking one of these up, probably just need to stop by our your, office. Your county extension office, yep. Yeah, and they're absolutely free, guys. So this is a new resource. Stop by and pick it up at the extension office. We're going to have more from Rachel tomorrow, so hope to see you then. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.